Hello everyone. The video you are watching here is the result of collective efforts of all the members of the group named the MCT of the subject the material characterization technique. This video is mainly on the topic the Raman spectroscopy and we as a team thanks Dr. Pratibha Nalni, our subject teacher for her proper guidance. The Raman effect was named after one of his discoverers, the Indian scientist Sir C. V. Raman, who observed the effect by means of sunlight together with K.S. Krishnan and independently by Grigory Landsberg and Leonid Mandelstam. Raman won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1930 for this discovery accomplished using sunlight, a narrow band photographic filter to create monochromatic light and a cross filter to block this monochromatic light. He found that a small amount of light had changed frequency and passed through the cross filter. Systematic pioneering theory of Raman effect was developed by Czechoslovak physicist George Plaszczek between 1930 and 1934. The mercury arc became the principal light source, first with photographic detection and then with spectrophotometric detection. In the years following its discovery, Raman spectroscopy was used to provide the first catalog of molecular vibrational frequencies. Originally, heroic measures were required to obtain Raman spectra due to a low sensitivity of the technique. Raman spectroscopy works on the basis of inelastic scattering of light. It occurs when a photon excites a sample molecule in a certain vibrational state to a higher virtual state. Then it comes down to a lower energy level which is at a slightly higher point than the initial energy level. This shift in the wave number is known as the Raman shift. In, a, in the apparatus, a sample is illuminated with a laser beam. EM radiation from the spot is collected with a lens and then sent through a monochromator. Scattered radiation is filtered out by a notch filter and rest is dispersed onto the detector. Now we will demonstrate you the instrumentation of Raman spectroscopy. This is the laser source. This is a screen which makes a laser light monochromatic. This is the specimen. This is the filter which filters the unwanted light particles. Here the data goes in for the formulation of the graph by the computer. The laser light passes through the filter and hits the sample. Some of the light is absorbed by the sample due to inelastic collision and the remaining are scattered back which then pass through the filter. The filter differentiates those unwanted light particles which are not required. The remaining light particles are sent to the computer to obtain the graph. X-ray diffraction provides detailed information on the crystallographic structure and physical properties of the material and thin films. The sample is irradiated with a beam of monochromatic X-ray over variable incident angle range. The interaction with the atom in the sample results in the diffracted X-ray when the Bragg equation is satisfied. Resulting spectra are characteristics of the chemical composition and phase. The technique unique, uniquely provides phase identification along with the phase quantification, percentage crystallinity, crystalline size, and unit cell. For the layered material, it allows compositional depth profiling of phases with the structure. Variants There are several types of variants of Raman spectroscopy. The first one being surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. Normally done in a silver or gold colloid or a substrate containing silver or gold. Surface plasmons of silver and gold are excited by the laser, resulting in an increase in electric field surrounding the metal. Given the Raman intensities are proportional to the electric field, there is a large increase in the measured signal. Resonance Raman Spectroscopy The excitation wavelength is matched to an electronic transition of the molecular crystal, so that vibrational modes associated with the excited electron state are greatly enhanced. This is useful for studying large molecules such as polypeptides, which may show hundreds of bands in conventional Raman spectra. Coherent Anti-Stokes Raman Spectroscopy The two laser beams are used to generate coherent anti-stroke frequency beam which can be enhanced by resonance. Raman Optical Activity It measures the vibrational optical activity by means of small difference in intensity of Raman scattering from chiral molecules. How does uh, Raman Spectroscopy differ from FTIR that is Fourier Transform Infrared spectroscopy there is only one main difference that is uh, in Raman spectroscopy 
uh, if the two molecules are same then in the graph which we obtained the peaks will be high uh, but in FTIR if the molecules are same the peaks will be very low that's why both are called complementary to each other as in this graph you can see the red line depicts FTIR and the blue line depicts Raman spectroscopy in around 1000 cm inverse the graph of Raman spectroscopy has a very high peak but the graph of FTIR is very low that's because at that point there may be a chance of getting any similar molecules Raman spectroscopy is used in many varied fields in fact any application where non-destructive microscope chemical analysis is amazing and required the main application of the Raman spectroscopy is compound distribution in tablets blend uh, uniformly informing the a uh, informing the pattern of the chemicals and also the main application is also that the gemstone and the mineral identification fluid inclusion mineral and phase distribution in rock sections phase transition mineral behavior under extreme condition Thanks for watching this video.